The other day I made a video talking about how governments are banning wood stoves. There's lots of municipalities here in the United States that are banning them. Some states are banning them. Now when I said that, of course you get the replies back, no, that's not true, there's not one state that banned them. Well, if you look, Oregon and Washington have extra requirements over our own federal government, which I'm gonna talk about here in a minute, meaning that you have to meet those standards. And then there's uh, countries banning them. So there's a lot of restrictions on these wood stoves. I was talking about the other day, the federal government, back in the early 2010s, started regulating these so bad that companies who make them went out of business because they couldn't comply with the new requirements. They couldn't get it, the smoke from going out the chimney. Now, a few of these companies were able to survive. What they did was is they, they made two different types of wood stoves, and sometimes it's a hybrid wood stove. You have these air tubes here. What these air tubes do is they get real hot from the fire and then it starts to burn the smoke. So if you use an example like a, a candle, you blow out a candle and the smoke comes up, you can light the smoke and relight the, the wick. You can even make a generator where it will burn off the smoke from firewood. And all you gotta do is take the smoke and put it up against the air filter and it'll suck that smoke in and then the spark plug will light that smoke inside the cylinder and it runs just like a regular generator. Now use an old generator because it'll probably tear it up. Of course, every time I make a video like this, somebody will say, you're an idiot. I've been burning firewood for 30 years. All you gotta do is start ripping this stuff out. You don't need all that stuff in there. There's two problems I have. One, you got the folks who don't wanna comply with anything the government says. And then you got the other folks who say, oh no, the government's not doing what you're saying. So, well, sometimes you get the, the ones that will say, but this is good for the environment. But regardless, I need to address both of these issues. The one where they're not banning them, and the other is, I'm not gonna comply with the federal government. Okay, don't comply with the federal government. They will ban these if we don't do what they're telling us to do. But you don't wanna comply, fine. First of all, insurance companies don't want you to have these. They make it so impossible. That's why we live in a, one of the reasons we live in a tiny house is because if I burn down my house, I don't need insurance. It's $5,000, I can replace it. No big deal, I can rebuild it myself. The thing about the people who call you an idiot is they don't know how to actually talk. Now, when I say this, I'm not talking about anybody else. You can spell and talk any way you want. I am not some sort of grammar specialist or anything. I'm speaking to the people who call me an idiot. If you're gonna call someone an idiot, don't use the word your, Y-O-U-R. It's actually Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, you are. And instead of using A, you're supposed to use an, A-N, your an. And the reason you use an instead of A is because if the next word starts with a valve, then you need to use an, an idiot. If it's a consonant, then you can use an A. Now there's other rules to that, but uh, that's what applies here, so that's all I'm gonna speak about. And then of course, you might wanna Google how to spell idiot. So if I'm the idiot, why are you spelling all your words wrong? You have three words there, and you can't get them right. But let's talk about how the, I'm the idiot, and we'll go along from there. If you don't wanna comply with the government, fine. Like I said, they will ban them, but here's the thing is there are a massive amount of advantages to having this wood stove. These air tubes make this thing really efficient. You're using all your energy that you're cutting up. Now, when we talk about energy, we're talking about my energy also. Remember, people say, getting firewood will warm you twice. Well, it's more like it will warm you 50 times because you gotta load the truck, unload the truck, split the logs. Well, of course, you gotta cut the logs. Then you gotta load the truck back up and you gotta stack it and you gotta move it back in the house. It warms you a ton. Well, I don't wanna do any more work than I have to, so let's limit the amount of firewood I need to use. I can use about a cord of wood a year, so that's three truckloads of mine. The nice thing about these new efficient wood stoves is it burns all, like I said, burns all the smoke. It's eight, this one's 85% efficient. Each year they have to get more efficient according to that law they wrote that uh, supposedly they didn't write. So now this one's 85% efficient. It's like, I don't know, maybe four or five years old now. I bought this one used. Now they are like 95% efficient. As a matter of fact, the company that made this wood stove, it's called Wood Pro. 
they went out of business right after I bought this. So the only thing they're doing now is supplying parts. So I had to buy a window. It was really hard to buy from them. It took them weeks to send it out. It took so long that I decided to go ahead and order another one. And they're pretty expensive. Got that one first, like within a couple of days. And then the one from WoodPro actually showed up several weeks later. It's up in the attic in case it ever breaks again. The smoke is actually wood particles going up in the air. And then it holds the temperature for hours. When it goes down to embers and these, now I call them fire bricks because that's what everybody else calls them. Even though that's not what they're really called. I can't remember the name of them. I tried to Google them the other day, but I couldn't figure it out. This is actually some sort of insulation. These fire bricks, they're really light and they break really easy. I got one down at the bottom that's broke, but I've left it there. It doesn't seem to hurt it. So that holds the temperature for hours, about eight to 10 hours actually. So you light it and you can get about 10 hours. Now the wood only burns for a couple hours, maybe not even that long. Once it burns out, then it's holding all that heat. Well, what I do is I let that house temperature get down to about 68 degrees. I light the wood, it gets up to about 88, 90 degrees, somewhere around there. And then it's all day long and drops and drops and drops. So I only need to light this a couple times a day. That's how I use such little amount of wood. But I'm the idiot. I'm feeling like if I have to cut a lot of firewood, that makes me an idiot. But if I use a least amount of firewood possible, I feel a little bit smarter. But we'll go with I'm an idiot from the guy who can't spell. Now, one of the issues with these efficient wood stoves, these EPA efficient wood stoves that nobody wants to get because the government says you can't have you know the, the chimney smoking out, is it's got to take dry firewood. So you have to probably get one of these. Now, you see how that sounds kind of hollow? If you take two two by fours and click them together, they're hollow also because they use a kiln to dry these. This is oak, it takes about three years, two to three years to dry. And it has to be below 20% moisture level. Now I know the people in the Northwest are gonna go crazy when I say this, but you're not supposed to run pine and cedar in it either because that sap in this pine and cedar is water. Now the problem with water, not only does it cause creosote in your chimney like it did with the old wood stoves and cause chimney fires, it just doesn't want to go in these new wood stoves. These things are designed for dry firewood. That being said, running dry firewood is actually more efficient. It's some crazy number, don't quote me on the number, but when you have to burn wet wood, remember you're burning water. Something like 70% of the energy in the wood stove is being used to burn off that water. So when you burn dry firewood, even though yes, people will say, oh, it goes off a lot quicker and I have to reload the firewood all the time and you know all these things that they, they want to make excuses for because it's so hard to let firewood sit. I know that is just, a, oh my, how much work it takes to just stack the firewood like you were gonna do anyways and wait three years, two years, whatever. Now, if you have something less than oak, oak is oak and hickory, or I think there's one other too, I don't quote me, have the highest BTUs. So if you're running something like sycamore, it has very low BTUs, but it's still considered a hardwood, it's not cedar. Hardwood is anything that's not an evergreen, is my understanding. So if you're using sycamore, th those BTUs are much less. And I like to use those in the fall and springtime because the oak holds the temperature and lots more BTUs for a lot longer. So then you let it burn down to embers. Now, if you're running wet firewood, those embers turn to coal. And people will say all the time, these new wood stoves create so much ash. Well, what it is, those black charcoal things that are in the back is because your wood was wet. And so when it burned down and you didn't have any fire, 70% of the energy is being used in water, it died. That ember didn't burn down. You use dry firewood, those embers burn down to actual ash. You're using all the firewood that you're putting in there. Most people just scrape out those charcoals, throw them out. You're wasting firewood. Now, another thing you want to do is make sure your seals work well. So when you close it up, you put a dollar bill in there, you shouldn't be able to pull it out. If you can pull it out, that means it's sucking air in there and you're not running it as efficiently as you can. It's just burning off. So this is the only vent you need. Now, I know the terrible government 
specifically says do not put a damper here. Now it's in the instructions and it says federal government. So if you have it installed by a professional, they will not put a damper in there like a lot of people think you should. This does all the work. Again, if you're using dry firewood, you don't need that damper. When it's working correctly, you're not holding the heat in. There's nothing about holding the heat in. As a matter of fact, there's a ceiling right here. Right here. And it's got these fire bricks right up here at the ceiling. So it's not shooting out the chimney. It's, it's being absorbed by those fire bricks. There's only one little gap right here. I can barely get my hand in it. Where the smoke goes out the chimney. So, And it's kind of a twisty motion. So it comes up here, then runs up the top, and then out the chimney. So all that time, that heat is being produced and held inside the wood stove. Again, very efficient. The argument continuously is, is I'm not going to do anything the government tells me to do. Fine, do whatever you want. I don't really care. But to tell me that I'm pushing a government agenda by advertising these wood stoves, I'm advertising it because it saves my back. I got 15 cords of firewood. Now I know somebody's going to tell me, you can't have 15 cords of firewood. It'll rot before then. It won't rot. I've made many videos about it. We bought this property a couple years ago, three years ago. The last time anybody lived here or used this property was at least the early 90s. And there's a stack of firewood in the woods covered up with a piece of tin. Perfectly good firewood. 30 years. Oak and, and hickory will last a very long time stacked up off the ground. So I have 15 years worth of firewood. That's 15 cords. Three truckloads a year. Not bad. So if you want to do 15 cords a year, then you continue to do what you're doing, hurting your back. And as long as we're rebelling against the government, I'll work my hindsight off to do that. So I'm still the idiot because I don't want to work that hard. Now, for the, those who would want to address that the government isn't actually banning anything, you're a liar. Well, the government is. I mean, if you think about it, recently they've been trying to put restrictions on gas stoves and ceiling fans and dryers and washing machines and the list goes on and on. They've been recently wanting to do that. Why wouldn't they do it with wood stoves? They can actually make an argument, even though it's a false argument, that this hurts the environment more than anything else because it does produce a lot of carbon. So that's terrible. We don't want carbon, right? What they fail to mention is this is pretty much carbon neutral. Even though you're putting a lot of carbon up in the air, when a new tree grows, it takes all that carbon back. So it's just a recycling of carbon. But you're never going to convince anybody of that. Now, for those who come up and tell me I'm a liar because government isn't banning these, states aren't banning these, they are a ban because if you listen to the other side of the argument, they want to make homemade wood stoves and they want to put it in their houses. That's completely illegal, but that's what they want to do. So if they want to make a wood stove on their own, but you can't because that's illegal, that's a ban. And I understand the argument, I really do, that if you want to make your own wood stove, you should be able to, because these things are expensive. I think this one's uh, priced at $2,300. Of course, we got it used for $400. That's another thing about Washington and Oregon you can't even buy a used wood stove because it doesn't meet the newest requirements. You have to go out and buy the most efficient. I watched a guy on YouTube who's in Oregon. He installed a wood stove and they wouldn't pass it because there's a ventilation that comes in. It's the air intake. So the air comes in from outside into the wood stove. That's so you're not taking air from the house. He didn't hook that up didn't see a need it was for a shed or his garage or whatever it was and they wouldn't allow him to do it so if they won't even allow you to do a wood stove without the intake they're certainly going to worry about the out exhaust we ran a franklin wood stove down there that was made back in the 60s i know that because my grandmother had one when i was a child and we bought one used and made outdoor heat exchanger for it smoked like a train it was terrible like those old steam engines but if I wanted to install that here, per code, I wouldn't be able to. The regulations just won't let you do it anymore. It's too old. You have to do it. There's a couple other advantages to running dry firewood following the instructions is your chimney doesn't fill up with creosote. That's a tar substance. What it is is the water combines with the smoke, it becomes this tarry, pasty, yucky stuff sticks inside your chimney and it catches on fire like at 400 degrees so when a spark comes up from the 
wood stove and hits that chimney, it catches fire and it turns glow red. And every year on Facebook, I see someone, why is my chimney red? Well, it's because you didn't run for dry firewood. Running dry firewood keeps your glass clean. I see YouTube videos all the time just stained terribly bad. And you got to take a wet wipe or something, a sock, a wet sock, put ash on it. You got to scrub it off because ash does take it off pretty good. If you just burn dry firewood, it forms this little dust on it. And you just you can wipe it off with your hand or a sock. You don't need water or ash or anything. So there are a ton of advantages to following the law, even though we're not going to follow the law because we're rebellious. I'm just going to say, hey, it's going to save your back. So if you'll click this up next box, take you a video that I made just the other day that everybody was saying how I'm, you're an idiot, spelled wrong. So I hope I can inspire you to stay warm and save your back when you're living your dreams. Thanks for watching.